Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels of Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And I also like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Poggy Hatton. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching this as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. And if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, fill their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Poggy Hatton, who will share with you her journey through music and creativity and how it can be a healing tool and inspire spirituality. Poggy will also hopefully be singing live her own forest towards the end of the show. Now, Poggy is a singer songwriter from Kent who weaves her interest in human potential in spiritual transformation with her music and songwriting, which reflects her own spiritual journey. Poggy has been writing music since she was a child coming from a musical family. She's inspired to create Poggy's potential blog where she's interviewing guests from all over the world, bringing you incredible life stories and wisdom to give you fresh perspectives and inspiration on your life's journey. This spiritual talk show blog is a fusion of Poggy's inspiring and unique songwriting and a desire to help humanity progress forward in the present. Poggy released her first album entitled Woman last year and has reviews for her music such as Poggy's unaffected narratives about her life and personal truths are raw and strangely affecting and many of its songs got stuck in my head after a couple of listens and don't seem to be interested in moving out anytime soon. So without further ado, hello Poggy and welcome to the Ancient Destiny show. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's lovely to You're be here. Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then please hit the like and love button and please say hello to us to let us know who is here. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all the recordings. Now you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Poggy and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live. But if we can't do that, we'll do that once the show is finished. So, Poggy, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how your journey through music and creativity has helped inspire you and others? Mm. Well, um, so a bit about me and my my childhood. I was one of six um, growing up as the youngest of six. Um, and uh, so, yeah, very large family living in quite a, rattling around quite a big house. Um, without much money, actually, but we did have to have a fairly big house to kind of um, house us all. And we were all um, very musical uh, because of my mum and dad. They were both uh, pianists, concert pianists originally, and then they became teachers of the piano. And my dad is a singer and a poet as well. So quite a sort of, you know, artistic, musical kind of family, really. We all kind of seem to be good at different things. And... Um, but it was only really myself and one of my sisters that um, took to writing our own music um, somewhere quite a long way down the line, actually. We we did a lot of choirs and things growing up. And so, yeah, we had a real sort of musical background, but mainly from the kind of classical perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and so there wasn't really, but we always used to mess around with singing and stuff. And we always used to kind of create our own harmonies and stuff like that. So singing in vocal harmony has always been quite a massive part of growing up and actually I think I always found it very um soothing to sing in harmony as well it was really lovely to kind of you know be doing all that yeah. singing with the family it kind of had a real sort of soothing effect in an otherwise quite a stressed sort of household so that was that was really nice um and then I kind of went to university and stuff and then it wasn't until I came back from university that I kind of joined my first band uh with my sister and brother uh, they were part of it and and then kind of stayed with, in the band for quite a long time and explored again loads of vocal harmonies and mm. stuff like that there was a band called Cocos Lovers who are still going actually <laughs> a big eight piece band um, 
it was kind of all centered around vocal harmonies and stuff. And then um, I kind of left that and decided to pursue my own um, songwriting. And that, that kind of felt like the right thing to do. Kind of, I felt like I wasn't really enjoying it so much towards the yeah. end that I wanted to kind of branch off and do my own thing. And um, yeah, I suppose since then, my journey has really been kind of, you know, expressing everything that I've kind of been through in my life through my music, which I suppose is is common to most songwriters. They will mm. write about their experiences of life. And, and I've found it very much a kind of healing thing to do in that it's, it's a way of me channeling um, things. Like I, sometimes I feel like I'm channeling stuff which isn't necessarily to do with me, but it always kind of resonates with me, what, what I'm writing about always kind of has a healing effect on my own life. And um, I can imagine it would also help other people as well, um, going through similar kind of things. Um, so yeah, I've always found it a sort of very, very sort of, I guess it's like journaling or something like that. It just feels like mm. you're really just kind of letting it all out, but through the music rather than <laughs> <laughs> in other ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that, that, yeah, that makes like sense. I enjoy doing it for myself, but I absolutely love, um, you know, performing and stuff as well. So it's a kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a mixture of, of kind of just doing it for myself, but also really enjoying doing it for other people as well. Yeah, um, I, yeah, that 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 that's that's really good. That sort of like, you know, um, you're doing it not just for yourself, but you're doing it for other people as well. So. When you've been writing the music, have you, I mean, when you started writing music, did you, were you channeling the music then or did that come later or did you not realise at the time that's that that's what you were doing? I think the way, I think obviously like being in that, the, the band that I was in kind of put me in good stead to start kind of exploring with, with like that. It was always like something would just come up quite randomly, almost like someone had sort of, you know, taken over for a second. And then it would kind of start a kind of, like a theme of some kind. I always find when I write, I always find that the music comes first and it always comes by some sort of strange chance. Like I haven't necessarily sat down to write a song, but I'll just be messing around and then something will just sort of happen. And then that will inevitably lead to a song. And sometimes songs can kind of be done and dusted in like a couple of hours or they might take much longer and some of them I still haven't finished so it's like it just really depends on how quickly the song wants to come out yeah. <laughs> and how relevant it is at this point I suppose yeah 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 I, I suppose, I suppose that's it. yeah I suppose that's why some are still waiting to be finished because it's not relevant for you or the people that are going to be listening to yeah. it at this moment in time yeah exactly that, that could well be could well be true and um i always sort of find that the as, as, as well sometimes the words will come really really easily and other times they just don't want to come <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah it really feels like it's like that i i never try and i never force anything i just kind of it's the one thing in, in that i just quite good at just sort of letting happen um I would say it's the, the probably the one thing in my life which I'm really good at letting go of and just letting letting happen, and I could probably do with doing that more in other areas of my life as well, <laughs> you know, to make things flow a bit more. But with the music, it does just flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people can um, can relate to that. Um, you know, with just allowing things to happen and to flow. We always try and be in control of everything. Yeah. Um, that that we're doing. So it's nice that you've got that um sort of like ability to allow the music just to kind of like take over and yeah you know and and flow along flow along with you yeah 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 exactly yeah that feels very good actually feels like a good feels like i'm doing what i should be doing <laughs> yeah so so when you've um so so when you start um you know you played about on the guitar and everything do you write it do you write it down or do you memorize it or do you record it because 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 I'm kind of like thinking if you start something and then you go off and do other songs and then you come back how do you remember that that's the song you're doing in the first place yeah that's a good point I, I 
I think what, because when I start something on the, so well, the music always comes first before the words. And, and when I start the music, I always, because I'm so fascinated with what's just come out, I kind of will keep playing it until it's totally ingrained into my brain. So there's no chance of me kind of going and doing yeah. the and then coming back and forgetting it. It's kind, of, it's kind of like once I've done that, that that kind of, I've nailed it into my system and I, I can't really forget it. But with the words, I am, um, I normally write them down as I go. So if I if I think of a good kind of sentence or whatever, or I'm happy with something. I'll, I'll write it down straight away because um, yeah, that's the one thing I I feel like I, I'd easily kind of forget is, is yeah. the word. So as soon as it's come up and as soon as I'm happy with it, I'll just write it down on a scrap of paper and I've got scraps of paper everywhere <laughs> <laughs> with lyrics on. And then eventually, once the song's done, I I kind of write them all out sort of neatly, and that's quite a nice process as well. I, don't know. Yeah. I guess everyone's way is different, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you find out um, which, which way works best best with you. So um, your album, Woman, how did you choose the songs you were going to put on it? I think at that time, and, and that, that album is like quite a few years sort of since it's been done, completed now, and the actual process of creating the album itself, you know, like sending it out to be produced or whatever is, is quite a lengthy process as well. Um, so it's quite a, quite a few years ago that 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 was that was completed. Um, I at the time of doing the album, I just knew which songs would, were going to go on it because they were songs that I had um, had written and were really sort of kind of well and truly embedded in my kind of psyche. They were songs that I were playing regularly at uh, gigs and stuff like that. And it was like a oh, sorry, that's my phone that's stuff. <laughs> Um, there were songs that I was just playing over and again, and they just were really obvious, obviously supposed to be on the album, really. Sorry, let me just... Yeah, no worries. And whilst Poggy's going to uh, still her phone at, um, those that watch this, please say hello so that we know you're here and we can actually say hello back to you, because that'll, be, uh, that'll be handy. So going back to the songs on the album. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I say, just the... I, I think the way it happened was that because my husband runs a music and arts pub uh, in Deal in Kent where I live and um, I'd been brewing up to you know I was hoping to do an album you know at, at that point and I'd kind of I think I'd been fretting about doing it for quite some time saying I've got to get an album <laughs> and then I'd kind of just relaxed about it I'd let it all go and I just sort of like wasn't really thinking about it anymore and uh, it was just a night at the music and arts pub and this guy um, I just sort of met this guy completely randomly and he was like, oh, I'm a producer, you know. And um, it turned out I did know him from quite a long time ago um, through a kind of, um, his brother was a boyfriend of my sister kind of thing. And, and we sort of knew each other. And, and then he was like, oh, I'd, you know, I'd love to do some producing because that's what he did. And he kind of had some free time. And then the next day he came around, I played him the songs and, um, you know, and, and he loved them and, and, you know, and I, I said, oh, you know, I had a clear idea of what songs should be on the album, really, because they all kind of just the style of them was all fairly kind of similar. Yeah. And um, and that was it. And we just kind of did it, you know, as soon as that was that happened. So. Yeah. And I decided to call it Woman because I, I was kind of like one of my favorite songs at the time. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I just like the name. I just <laughs> yeah, it was a good good thing to call it. And. It was all about me and kind of my struggles and being a woman and stuff. And so I kind of, you know, put it down. I thought that was a good title. Yeah, no, it's good. So some of the songs on, on the album, you know, how did the, how did they come about? You, you say it's sort of like the struggles you were, you were, you were going through and being yeah. a woman. And... It, it was at a time where I was um, working a lot of stuff out that had kind of occurred in my life. Um, you know, right from childhood, really. Um, and uh, so a lot of them, did you ask how they, how did they come about, the songs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so qu quite a few of them were me kind of processing what had kind of happened in, in my life up to that point and also, also processing a lot of, like, fears that I had as well and sort of... Um, fears of rejection and things like that that I experienced quite profoundly at that time and so a lot of the songs I feel kind of represent that 
you know, not a lot of them, but quite a few of them. Mm. And, um, you know, and processing things that happened in my family and stuff like that. So, and then I'm trying to think what other, yeah, and, and other songs were kind of a, more kind of, I don't know what the word would be, but one of them was kind of like about my mother-in-law when she kind of lost the plot a little bit at one point. And, um, you know, so a song was written about that. So there was yeah. like a couple of songs which are like written about things kind of outside of myself. Yeah. But then a lot of it is is me reflecting on on stuff that's happened in my own life and, and the way I'm feeling and, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's that's really quite brave sort of like, because I, I imagine that each song, each song you write, um, when it's personal like that, it's kind of like really brave to put it out so that everyone can hear it. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. It, it there is a, there, there is an element of that. But weirdly, I've never. Um, although I've quite, it's quite common for me. For it, you, I don't feel like this now actually. But I used to feel ashamed about the way I felt. So I used to feel ashamed that I felt rejected. I felt ashamed that I felt um, abandoned, and you know, I, I felt ashamed that I wasn't a perfect sort of specimen without any mm. problems. <laughs> Basically, I had a lot of shame about about myself. But yet, weirdly, I was quite happy to express all of those things through songwriting, even though the songs were telling people how I felt somehow I didn't mind them being in the form of a song mm. it kind of made it okay somehow but yeah yet, if someone was to ask me oh how are you doing you know <laughs> <laughs> what's going on for you I just feel totally ashamed about it so it yeah it's sort of a weird one actually I never really felt like I didn't feel sh or I didn't feel like scared about expressing myself through music sort of thing yeah even though the subjects were personal and kind of exposing me and making me seem vulnerable I suppose I didn't sort of have that concern when I was um, writing them and performing them yeah but yet on a personal one-to-one -one basis just talking to someone that would have been like shame I would have felt shame <laughs> 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 so it's funny actually mm. yeah so so how have you found that your songs have developed um you know over, over the years um well, I feel like um, I feel like I've kind of I feel like over the years I kind of feel like I understand myself a lot better. I'm not by any means saying that I'm problem free, far from it. But I feel like I have a lot more awareness about the way I feel and where those feelings have come from. And um, I generally just feel like I'm sort of taking responsibility a bit more for the way I feel. Um, and I don't feel ashamed about it actually now. I feel I feel like I'm quite happy to tell someone how, how I'm feeling without thinking, oh God, how can I be feeling like this? Um, and so you asked about the song. So I, I feel like the songs kind of reflect that really. I, I think they kind of ref reflect a, uh, a bit more awareness about everything and quite sort of, I feel like they're quite sort of truthful really. Um, yeah, and I'd say I'd say by and large they they're more optimistic in mm. nature. I feel although they have a kind of sometimes melancholy feel to them, I feel like they're much more like there's light at the end of the tunnel kind of feel to yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I feel like my songs have always had an element of that. I I never I would never say that a song that I've written is just like sad. You know, it's just sad. <laughs> I always yeah. feel like they've got an element of kind of hope to them and I because I've always felt that I've always felt like there is there is hope in my life um but I just feel like now I'm a little bit more aware of aware of stuff and I feel like I've sort of evolved a bit in that sense and getting more sort of clarity over why why I've experienced what I've experienced and and that I'm sort of responsible for it and I can I can deal with it and it's all fine <laughs> yeah yeah um, I mean, we've, we've got around some people um, on here, um, uh, so we'll come back to Carla in a minute, but we've got um, Rani says hi. Hello, Rani. Thank you for watching. Hello, Rani. And Ibrahim, who is um, watching from Jordan. So oh. thank you very much for, for joining in. And then um, Carla, who's obviously been listening, 
it sounds like journaling write it down let it go it heals yeah. the emotions and you move on beautiful yeah 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 it is it is like journaling and i i i always used to journal a lot actually just naturally i used to to write di- lots of people do, you know write diaries i yeah. was not really useful um and i write down my dreams now as well which i find quite interesting actually you know i quite yeah yeah, I, I keep I keep trying to write that, try to try to write my dreams down. And I'll start doing it, um, and then I'll suddenly it's kind of like, but I need to open my eyes, and I yeah. don't want to open my eyes. I want to stay curled up in bed, so yeah. I can actually write them down, which I should yeah. I, should, I should really because then I forget them because they're so brilliant. And I'm thinking, yeah. oh, I am, but I just can't be bothered to get out of bed. No, I know, and I. I'm exactly the same and I actually end up forgetting tons of dreams because of that very reason but some of them stick out and I remember them the next day and I'll probably the last one I had and I'll write that down but I know that will have had a ton of dreams before that. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly um Ibrahim asks us an interesting question how to how do you choose the song frequency mm. uh, well I've always been curious about frequency um but I've never I've never deliberately chosen, you know, I've never consciously thought, okay, what frequency am I going to go for now? I just kind of play, you know, I don't Mm. really think about that. You know, I just simply go by feeling, I guess. I know like people talk about um, the frequency of like how in an orchestra, the frequency has been upped a little bit and it kind of makes people feel a little bit more tense than it used to be when it was at four, three, two hertz Mm. or whatever it was. and but I, I don't really think about that. I just, you know, I literally just go by the way I feel. And if it feels good <laughs> for me, then it's OK. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, things at the moment about the different frequencies yeah. and certain frequencies like John Lennon's imagination. Um, yeah. And then sort of like the galactic frequencies that are, that are now coming in. So people are really quite interested in the frequency of songs and mm-hmm. I remember reading some articles about, yeah, how the frequencies have changed over yeah. the years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes. you know, I read a little bit about that as well. And I've been trying to sort of get my get my head around that, but it's almost like my brain can't. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not meant to, you're not meant to. You're meant to bring your own frequency in your own songs. I'm not clever enough. <laughs> <laughs> no I like to think of it that you've got your own frequency and that's what you're bringing through yeah 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 that's true with my voice and stuff certainly mm. like I've, I've kind of honed into my own frequency so yeah yeah that, that makes that makes much more sense I think. yeah yeah thanks for that <laughs> you're welcome anytime <laughs> so how have you found your sort of like spiritual journey has um progress as you've as you've been writing more and more um music yeah well I, f- I feel like I'm sort of you know delving deeper and deeper really into the the into the darkness <laughs> 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 I've been interested a lot um you know I still feel like I, there's lots of you know work for me to do really I feel I feel like in a way I'm just sort of scraping the surface of it but um I've been quite interested in shadow work and stuff like that mm. and it, and the thing of embracing your shadow and, um, you know, rather than doing what I've always done, which is to sort of try and get rid of it, you know, yes. <laughs> you know yeah. to get it out of the way. Um, so that's been really resonating with me is the idea of kind of, you know, really embracing your shadow and, and seeing what messages it has, you know, within it, you know, and it's all about kind of bringing it in and, and loving it and not trying to get rid of it. Yeah, and in doing so, you kind of free yourself from it essentially. Um, so I feel like with that, with that in mind, I've I've been really sort of delving a bit deeper into into myself really, and and I guess my songwriting just sort of re- reflects that. Mm. Um, actually, yeah, it just kind of reflects my kind of delving deeper in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, which makes absolute sense because um, there's a lot more. I think this year a lot more people are, are really going into their shadow side and looking deeper in, into their emotion. I know when I'm doing the cards, a lot more of that is coming up. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, with, with it, and it is, it is. You know, in the past we've all tried to 
uh, cover it up, forget about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was there, but it doesn't affect me now. Yes, yeah. But actually going back and embracing it, learning from it, healing mm. from it, knowing that it's it's part of you, it's it it's part of you. It has been part of you, mm. and it's the learn. It was a learning curve for you. Mm, mm, absolutely, and and not seeing it as a as a weakness, but more of yeah. A, kind of a special sort of message for you in some yeah. way you know yeah yeah that, that's going to help it's going to help you move it helps yeah. you move on um hi Car uh, karen's um said hi karen no clue what this uh, what this frequency means um you're probably a bit better to explain frequencies than i am <laughs> well i think frequency is well it's to do with the kind of you know how fast something's vibrating isn't it like, I mm. think that is basically what frequency is. Um, so I guess the higher the frequency, the higher something is vibrating. I, th I think mm. it's as simple as that, really, as far yeah. as I'm aware. You know, maybe perhaps it's more complex. Yeah, yeah. That, that, no, that, that's, that's, that's kind of like, um, yeah, the, 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 the way I understand frequency and the, and the way I work with, um, mm. with, with frequency mm -hmm. is that all of us vibrate on our, um, different frequencies. So yeah. a tangible vibrates on a different frequency to you and I. Yes. Because yeah. it's, a lot, it's a lot lower where we obviously we're a higher frequency. And then, you know, the further you get into your spiritual path, mm. um, you know, you, you get higher, higher frequencies. So you start mm. getting into the spiritual realms, the angelic realms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Et cetera. So, but with the music frequency, how, how you, you were saying sort of like, um the uh bands um not bad orchestras have changed yeah. the frequency slightly yeah i've heard i mean i might have got the number slightly wrong but so from 432 which was which people say is like the frequency of you know of the universe or whatever the, mm. the 432 is sort of like the ultimate frequency um Oh, so I'm explaining this terribly, but <laughs> I, I heard that also in you know, you know, hundreds of years ago they would have tuned the instruments to to that same frequency, and it would have like in ancient Indian music and stuff like that as well. Mm. I think it's all kind of tuned into that four three two frequency, so it's kind of really resonating and healing as well. It's got that healing quality to it. Yeah, um, and I think somewhere along the line in the modern kind of orchestra. Um, I don't know how many years ago, but they, maybe a hundred years ago, they they kind of tweaked the frequency so it's slightly higher. Um, and it kind of made everything a bit more edgy or something. It kind mm. of, um, so that, in that respect, I don't really understand, um, I don't understand why it would have made it more edgy because we talk about like things being really high frequency and things being really low frequency. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't necessarily really understand that exactly um, how that works, but that was the idea that they they mm -hmm. some sort of government <laughs> conspiracy trying to make yeah. something or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've 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 heard I've heard and read of that, but that's a whole different yeah, topic. Yeah, and I wouldn't be able to comment on that. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, in, into into conspiracies. But we've worked out that you work on your own frequency anyway, which yeah. is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 which is which is absolutely brilliant and and as should be because you're, voice, you're bringing yours the voice is great for that because it is really you know it's intuitive you know you're just literally mm. using your own voice there's no there's no manipulation to it you, you you just do it you know you do it for yourself and yeah your own frequency that you need or or maybe that other people need i don't know you know it, it's kind of personal isn't it and and other yeah. people will resonate it, it resonate to it if they if they need to, and if they don't, they won't kind of pick up on it, you know. Mm. So that's quite a nice way of looking at it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because because it is because you could listen to the same um, group all the time, but some of their songs sound nicer than other songs, mm. being because whatever frequency that song is at the time, that's sort of like, oh, I like this one, or I'm not so sure. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and there might be songs that you really liked when you were younger and then you just couldn't bear to hear them now sort of thing. And it's almost like, yeah, different songs for different parts of your life and mm. where you're resonating, you know, at that particular time. Yeah, and, and it is, again, also sort of like the, the, the personal stuff. I mean, 
I can't sing, but no, I, I can't say, you know, that this they're, they're sort of, I can't sing. I, I can't hold a tune. Um, um, and I do have quite a low voice, but I find that if I'm doing sounding, so I go into a meditative state and I start mm. sounding, I can get really high notes, which wow, I'm that's I'm incredible. tempted now, but that's because I've got into that, that energy space, I think. Yeah. Um, well, that's around. amazing. Yeah, but I still can't see. Well, I still can't hold a can't still can't hold a tune, and I can't do notes. <laughs> <laughs> People run out the room when I start singing. Yeah, well, I think I think you know I think anyone can sing, but I think you know, you know, with a bit of guidance, I think anyone can can do it. Really, you know, same yeah. as dancing. It's like singing and dancing. It's kind of um, instinctual, isn't it? You yeah. know, human beings do it. And, in every kind of culture in some capacity yeah although if you're if you're able to dance um you're supposed to be able to ice skate so if you can dance and run and balance i can't ice skate i can dance and i used to be a runner but i cannot ice skate so I don't know how, how they've worked that one out but, but that's going <laughs> off into another side note somewhere along the line yeah so <laughs> um you said um you might sing a song for us mm. So, are you happy to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, let me. This is um, this is a new guitar actually. It's a. Oh, okay. It's a a go. It's called a Godan, and um, Leonard Cohen used to play one of these actually. Ah, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd heard it, but I wasn't quite sure. Um. Oh, that's quite loud. So. <laughs> It's actually um, it's a nylon string guitar, but mm -hmm. it um, it doesn't have a, a hole in it. So it's sort oh. of, if you play it without plug being plugged in, it sort of it doesn't have that kind of resonancy that you would have with a classical guitar. So it's kind of yeah. like a mix of a classical guitar and electric guitar. Okay, so quite nice. Um, yeah, I thought I would play um, since we were talking about shadow stuff mm. <laughs> i thought i'd play a song that i wrote really recently called shadow and okay. um, it is literally about that is is embracing your shadow okay. and um it is very very new so if i make any cock-ups you'll know why <laughs> i haven't um performed this live actually so this is the first time oh brilliant this, thank um, you debut performance of this song so yeah i hope you enjoy it um, thank you shadow
shadow of me, lean right into me, let your feelings ring, tell me everything I need to know, take in every word. Make any mistakes that I could hear. <laughs> I made a few. It's a little bit of a funny because my guitar kept cutting out, so I don't, hope it didn't affect it too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded absolutely fine. It sounded absolutely fine to me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank absolutely. you for the to play. Brilliant. No, no, thank you. Thank you for thank you for playing and debuting it uh, on, <laughs> on the show. That was a debut. Um, that was a debut. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, Karen um, uh, had put on their music. I used to love, I can't stand, they're constantly changing the radio stations, which we were saying about, uh, yeah, yeah the, the, the fact that whatever you, you liked when you were younger, you, you might not like now because yeah, of yeah. frequency. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. Definitely, what you're resonating with now. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now, as you know, I do guided meditations, danger card reading. So each week I ask my guests whether they would like a guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching. So, Poggy, what would you like? What, do I get to choose an angel card? You get to choose. You get to choose whether I do an angel card or I do a guided meditation. Oh, I'd like an angel card, please. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. Most people do. I might as well just say I'll do that. <laughs> Maybe someone's going to do a meditation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those that know me, um, when I do um, angel cards, I don't do them to, to predict the future. Um, I use them for what we need to know for our highest good in the present. So although I work with the past, like with past life regression, for me that is you heal the past to help you in the present. And with the future work, I do future life progression, you go to see your future, which helps you in the present because you're not worrying about what's going on. So my card reads always done for the present. So what does Poggy and everyone need to know for their highest good? I just wanted to know. It's Poggy and everyone who's watching this need to know for the highest good. What does Poggy and everyone? Oh, I'm going to pull it out. Need to know for the highest good spent in time. 
Okay, so we got two cards that decided they were going to um, come out. So we've got stepping into power. You are strong beyond measure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a that goes? And we also got a view from above. Get the big picture. Yeah. Which I, I think is, uh, as always with the angel cards, they come out exactly what um, you already know. And it's just confirmation um, about 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 what you what you what you should what you should be doing. So so to me, these are sort of like say you know believe believe in yourself and what and what you what you are doing. You know, don't just look at the narrow thing that's happened in your life. Look at the bigger picture and actually take that step to yeah. actually go out in into the world and do what you're supposed to be doing. Mm, mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're welcome. So we we'll look forward to seeing what you're going to be stepping out into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got another, so have you got another album planned? Or? Yes, I have. Absolutely. I'm, I've, all the songs are there for the album. I've got about five albums planned. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so much stuff, um, you know, which is coming out and but also that I've done, you know, and I need to, you know, it's like, I guess it's like, like anything, you need to kind of record it, don't you? It's like, yeah, in, but it, it takes time. Um, so, yeah, I have got a second album on the way, definitely. Um, just need to kind of, yeah, get get going with that, really. Yeah. I suppose it's been started, but it needs to kind of accelerate a little mm. bit. Yeah. 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 Which, which it will do when the, t to fight when the time is right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Heard that. Well, Rani said, I love the sound of the music. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so Rani is there. And Karen said, good choice. I think that's a good choice that you chose the cards and not the meditation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also the good choice of the song as well. That, mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, what, uh, um, that's, that's what we think as well. Um, so everyone um i hope you found this um enjoyed this and found it very insightful and the words of wisdom poggy has given you will help you further on your journey so poggy if people want to connect with you how do they do that okay well you can either connect with me on facebook i'm it's poggy hatton um and um or you can and my website is www.poggymusic.com if you'd like to you know, hear more music, and I also uh, do a similar thing to what Ray's doing. I, I do a podcast as well. Um, and you do, works. and and it is and it is a really good pod, podcast, and you get some brilliant guests on there with some fascinating um, yeah. uh, topics. So yeah. yeah, if you get a chance to to watch it, please please do it. It's I want to really get you on there as well, Ray. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fine. Um, yeah, just we'll work out a date. I'm more than happy to come <laughs> on. That'd be really fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll make a nice change from interviewing to be interviewed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I look I look forward to connecting with any of you who want to connect. Absolutely. Yeah. That that that's that's absolutely brilliant. Mm. So thank you so much for everyone watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. Now, if you need help in finding um, and taking charge of your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me as I'd love to arrange a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger so that we can have a, a quick chat to find out more about each other and whether I can be of service to you. And I look forward to you joining me next week, Wednesday the 13th of March at 8pm, where I'll be talking to my guest, Christy Walters Forsyth, who can help you use your intuition for your most empowered life. And she also works with angels. So I will see you in and see you when, see you then. And <laughs> thank you everyone who's watched this today. And thank you, Poggy, for being on the show and for um, singing for us. It was absolutely brilliant. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for thank everyone you. watching. Yeah, thank you. And I'll see you all next week. Bye. Okay. <laughs>